Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Dr. Miller, back from a week of absence. As you all know, I broke my arm. But enough about me, the SCP we're going to be studying today is SCP-323, Object Class, Euclid. Special Containment Procedures SCP-323 is to be kept in a 17 by 17 by 3 meter concrete containment cell in Site-91. The object is to be restrained in the center of the cell with a 1 meter cubed container of 8.8 .8 centimeter thick transparent armor lined with one-way laminate, which is to be fit with one electronically locked access port. This container is to be internally lit with the surrounding cell kept dimmer to facilitate the one-way laminate. The cell is to be surveyed remotely at all times, and any signs of activity are to be reported. No personnel are to enter SCP-323's containment cell except to examine the integrity of SCP-323's restraint measures. The restraint measures are to be examined bi-weekly, and any signs of damage are to be repaired immediately. All personnel who enter SCP-323's containment cell are to be accompanied by an armed guard. Personnel are not to be within SCP-323's containment cell for longer than 45 minutes, and any communication around SCP-323 is to be written or spoken in a language other than French or English. In the event that SCP-323 breaches containment, an instance of SCP-323-1 is formed. Personnel are to evacuate Site-91 and the site is to be locked down. Remote units are to be deployed to destroy the body of SCP-323-1. Following this, armed personnel may be sent in to re-establish the containment of SCP-323. Description SCP-323 is the skull of an unidentified servant measuring 55 centimeters long, 27 centimeters wide, and 31 centimeters tall with a pair of antlers measuring 35 centimeters tall and 46 centimeters from tip to tip, rowing from the left and right sides of SCP-323. SCP-323 shows signs of damage consistent with outside exposure, with regular pitting, scarring, and weathering across the object, bleaching on the upper surfaces, and missing a lower mandible. The rear of the skull features an approximately centered ovoid gap measuring 25 centimeters high and 23 centimeters wide, giving access to an interior space 16 centimeters deep. This gap shows signs of tool use, indicating that it was carved with tools, possibly stone. SCP-323 displays the ability to react to oral, tactile, and visual stimuli. Testing has revealed SCP-323 appears to have a field of view similar to that of other cervids, and has responded to visual stimuli from up to 50 meters away. The targeting of specific members of personnel, various attempts to breach containment, and the violent reaction towards speakers of the French and English languages suggest a level of sapience. However, this is unconfirmed. SCP-323 is capable of limited locomotion, typically in the form of small movements and vibrations. In most cases, SCP-323 will only locomote in the event of various stimuli, such as moving away when touched or turning when personnel are present within its containment chamber. SCP-323 has demonstrated the ability to make larger movement, such as lunging at personnel and repeatedly attempting to force its way through containment measures. SCP-323 exerts an influential effect in a radius extending roughly 15 meters from itself. Individuals within this radius will begin experiencing cannibalistic thoughts and urges, violent outbursts, and impaired judgment after approximately one hour of continuous exposure. Roughly 74% of individuals who reach this point will attempt to place their heads through the gap present in the back of SCP-323, with efforts made to keep their mouths uncovered. If an individual is incapable of fitting their heads through the gap, attempts will be made to bludgeon their heads against nearby hard surfaces until the point the individual's head fits. The individual loses consciousness or the individual expires. Once the individual has fit their head through SCP-323, 
the individual is classified as SCP-323-1. Within 10 minutes of putting SCP-323 on, SCP-323-1 will undergo drastic physical alterations. SCP-323-1 will experience rapid loss of body fat, body hair, and pigmentation, followed by the rupturing of the distal phalanges from the fingertips, abnormal tooth growth, and the blackening of extremities consistent with frostbite. Additionally, SCP-323-1 appears to experience greater strength and pain tolerance than the average human. However, SCP-323-1 still appears to be as susceptible to physical harm as it was prior to its introduction to SCP-323. SCP-323-1's metabolism will experience a dramatic increase, requiring a constant caloric intake, with starvation occurring anywhere between 15 to 30 minutes if no self-preservation efforts are made. In order to sustain its increased metabolism, SCP-323-1 will actively seek out and eat other individuals for sustenance until expiration. In the event SCP-323-1 is incapable of finding plentiful nourishment, SCP-323-1 will make efforts to sustain itself, including limiting movement, rationing available food, and auto-cannibalism. SCP-323-1 will only feed upon humans. It is presumed that SCP-323-1 is capable of receiving sustenance from other sources, but chooses not to, despite availability or ease of access. During the pursuit of individuals, SCP-323-1 has been known to occasionally make various statements in the Severn, Ojibwe, Potawatomi, and Cree languages, as well as in the native language of the instance. It is not known if these statements and the knowledge of these languages is the result of SCP-323's anomalous influence or they originate from SCP-323 itself. The following audio log has been transcribed from surveillance recovered during the 11th of September 2006 containment breach of SCP-323, which resulted in the death of 12 personnel members before containment could be re-established. No accompanying video surveillance could be recovered. Playing now. SCP-323 was recovered on the 9th of December 1997 in the Bittern Lake Reserve, part of the Lalak Rong First Nation in Saskatchewan, Canada. A small unregistered community had been sustaining an active SCP-323-1 instance by routinely murdering individuals and leaving them out as appeasement. Investigation revealed individuals were involved, who were interviewed and subsequently administered amnestics, and a cover story involving an unidentified serial killer was propagated. SCP-323-1 at the time, suspected to be the anomaly, died of starvation during its transfer to Site-91. The recorded number of deaths did not appear consistent with the duration of the SCP-323-1 instance. It is suspected that SCP-323 went through several instances 
of SCP-323-1 before containment. However, no irrefutable evidence supporting SCP-323-1's longevity has been uncovered. Interview SCP-323-A James Namagoose An individual involved in the murders and sustaining of SCP-323-1 prior to its containment was brought in for questioning involving SCP-323-1. Mr. Namagoose remained unusually calm throughout and after the interview. Following the interview and containment of SCP-323, Mr. Namagoose was administered amnestics and was reintroduced to his community. Playing log, now. Please state your name for the record. James Namagoose. Please state your involvement with the murders. I helped move the bodies for the Wendigo aid. What do you know about the object? There's a story of the Cree men, back when fighting was common, who tried to control the Wendigo to give his people an advantage. It was just a story. The elders knew more, but we were safe, so we didn't ask. When did you first encounter the entity? One night, I heard yelling all around the village. A warped man walked out of the woods, killed our friends right in front of us. Sometimes it would stare more than it would make to kill, trying to talk to you. It whispered at me, Pimisto, come and eat. It made me cold in my bones. And then, then it felt I could understand the warped man, the Wendigo, and then we could leave with him like we all do when we pass. When I was made to kill, I thought of this and it calmed me. I didn't run. It would look at me sometimes. I could hear him in my mind. I could feel him watching me from out of my own eyes. This helped me watch these people die. And I hoped it would pass on my family. Thank you, Mr. Namaguchi. Final note. No mental effects similar to what Mr. Namagu stated have yet to be reported by staff who have interacted with SCP-323 or SCP-323-1. Further investigation into this is not planned. However, staff are encouraged to report any atypical thoughts or feelings experienced while working with either. Alright, thank you very much for listening. And you're all dismissed. Goodbye. I would like to give a special thank you to Desmond Hoskins, Andre Bichert, Dr. Mortis, Cody Tench, Pierce M. Hamlin, Cy Seven Actual, Rebellion Fidelius, and Tyver Ball. If you would like a personalized thank you at the end of each of my videos, and some other cool stuff as well, visit patreon.com forward slash thevolgan. Thank you.